secret operation that includes not only the U.S., but Europe and the rest of the world? Well, that's apparent because you can see the the pictures from all over the world, and I get them constantly. Uh, some areas are worse than others. The excuse for this is, number one, weather modification, number two, to save us from global warming, and number three, to save us from the terrorists. Uh, a lot of these programs, of which there are many patterns and which has been uh, designated as wake vortex simulation carried out by NASA Langley Research Center, uh, many of these operations uh, and the patents go on to explain how if there is a, a biological attack by a terrorist at some point that these exercises and practices will in a sense save us with the spider webbery uh, that comes down from the aerosol spraying potentially gathering the chemical mass spray that could be sprayed on any given population the problem with that is uh, the terrorists don't have the means to deliver this they don't have the access to deliver this over the american populace per se and the only people who have been doing this, that is biological experiments on the American people, is the military themselves, which has been admitted from everything from Operation Shad to the spraying that happened in San Francisco, I believe back in the 60s and the 70s, that literally killed people. Um, again, I may not be able to, to ascribe intent, but what I can say is that it is, it is expected that there will be increased mortality as well as the potential of a huge host of unknown uh, pathogens. Uh, that we are subject to, and this is not based on speculation. There's a whole whole arena of biological uh, research that we haven't even begun to touch on. Could a strange substance found Armed by a with these lab Arkansas results about the high levels of barium found in our sample. We're in the San San Bernardino Mountains. The official explanation here is that jet contrails are causing strange lines in the sky. what effects barium has on the body. Short-term exposure can lead to anything from stomach to chest pains. Long-term exposure causes blood pressure problems. Ryan addressed concerns by chemtrail researchers that barium could be meant to wear down a person's immune system. We're talking about dominating our air supply without the human consent in, in a way that is, is difficult for many of us certainly to conceive and certainly many of us refuse to accept it, even in the light of sufficient and overwhelming evidence. My job in the U.S. Air Force was working in bioenvironmental engineering. What bioenvironmental engineering is in the Air Force is equivalent to that of the OSHA and the EPA.
summarize it in an attempt to debunk this conspiracy theory as I thought it was, I didn't debunk it. It literally changed my life. Um, like I said, this is hard for me because it's not easy standing here and telling my story. Uh, can you go into the details of exactly what you saw? Yeah, basically to summarize it, part of my job was to know everything that was going on in the military and what that might, what type of impact that might have on human health and then the environmental aspects and impacts. What chemicals are we using? How are we disposing of it? Kind of cradle to grave. So we were the internal um, compliance people for following OSHA and EPA standards. Uh, one part of that process was to approve chemicals, hazardous materials, you know, what are you using, why do you need it, where is it being used, and tracking that disposal. Um, after it being brought to my attention about chemtrails or geoengineering, I, I used to think it was crazy. It actually was disrespectful to my line of work because here we are trying to prevent environmental aspects and impacts um, and not have anybody get sick from our operations. But in, in an attempt to debunk, I, it changed my life. I started noticing things, I started noticing large quantities on the system where I would approve chemicals that did not have a manufacturer name wasn't tied to a building and that, that was normal protocol. When I started asking questions, um, I slowly became demonized. Um, a, a couple years passed after that when I asked again and people realized I was kind of being more vocal about it on social media, I was starting to be thrown into a mental institution and have my daughter taken away. That changed my life. I no longer view the military the same way and I feel like after nine years of trying to uphold an oath, I'm able to do that now. For this time, I have remained pretty much silent on the topic of chemtrails. Uh, my background, actually, as a mechanical engineer, I studied pollution, I uh, studied power plant technology, I also studied uh, jet technology somewhat and how a jet engine works, and a lot of other things similar to this. And I was looking at all the comments on this video here. This video has some pretty interesting footage, as you can imagine. Uh, as you can see. Now, people in the uh, comment section are debating whether or not this is chemtrails or contrails and calling each other names and things of that nature. Uh, which is sort of what this topic has devolved into. But what I wanted to show you in this footage is something I noticed. I mean, if you want to believe it's just contrails, you're just going to tell yourself it is. And if you want to believe it's chemtrails, you're going to just tell yourself it is. But I think, you know, for most people, they're like, well, it's obviously not contrails, right? I think more, more often than not, I think most people, if you just took a standard poll, they'd probably think, they probably lean towards there's something being sprayed here. Now, what I wanted to point out is where this trail is coming off. You can tell it's not coming uh, directly from the, the back of the engine. You can see it's coming from the side of the engine. It's very obvious. And this would indicate that it's clearly not contrails, but something being sprayed. Because if you look at where the device is being installed, on, on these jets is located, it would be right about where this is shooting out. So, um, and then of course, if you just go look at standard contrail footage, it's entirely obvious this is not contrails. There's something really weird going on here. Of course, you're just saying this is some sort of exceptional situation of contrails. No matter how you slice it, even if you're completely a, a total disbeliever in chemtrails, if you're looking at this scientifically, something is awry. It's not, this is not normal. Okay. Now some of the pictures on Wikipedia here are not contrails, uh, although they, they try to just, you know, cover up the whole chemtrail thing, even here in Wikipedia. As you can see here, you have uh, off the propeller itself, uh, a vortex condensation and here's a really interesting old photo, which you can see clearly almost often with contrails, it dissipates pretty quickly and fades uh, as, as you're going. And this actually makes sense if you think about it scientifically. I mean, if you have a clear sky, 
there's a reason why it's a clear sky uh, because clouds can't easily form in that clear sky and you know of course there's various situations and different types of clouds and different ways clouds are made whether it's uh, you know with the hot air rising and then uh, the, the water condensing in the water I mean in the air and it comes out to uh, eventually become clouds now of course you also have different types of clouds where you have air blowing on a mountainside and then it shoots the air up and then it makes another type of, of cloud so you have all these different kinds of clouds and actually when I was in college I studied pollution and how pollution lifts from a city you know sometimes you have a, a city that has like sort of like a, a sort of a dome of pollution over it at certain times of the day and then at other times of the day it dissipates and I actually was doing calculations trying to figure out what time of day they would dissipate and all that kind of stuff so but I mean if you look at this it's pretty obvious with contrails it doesn't look anything like that footage <laughs> I mean it doesn't not even remotely you can see with this footage clearly this is contrails and this is nothing remotely like what we see uh, in the sky these days and I sh of course showed fo uh, video footage earlier of you know, comparing contrails to chemtrails, uh, a very huge difference. And of course, with this Wikipedia, you go down and then you have people saying, oh, look, contrails spread out by upper winds. And of course, covers the whole sky. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting. They've, they've spread sort of a mixture here, you know, uh, contrails and chemtrails, right? It's kind of what you have with it and so and then that makes it easier to cover up the whole topic it makes it easier to cover up the whole topic right and I find this also to be the case with other topics as well um, it's been a while it's been a year or two since I've done videos on rainbows and how they're created if you take a light and a mirror you and then you have water and you just spray it you can make this effect similar to what you see as a rainbow outside but you need a mirror the reason why you need a mirror is because you need two polarizers outside you don't need a mirror you just run the lawn uh, hose you know and spray a little bit of water up uh, sort of like a sprinkler and you see a rainbow but in a house if you have a mist of spray and you shine a light on it from a flashlight, you don't get the same effect unless you do it through a mirror. First, reflecting the light from the flashlight. Now, uh, of course, it sounds like I'm getting completely off track, but I'm not. Let me explain. So what that means is we have some sort of polarizer that we're unaware of above us. That polarizer uh, could be one of a number of things. It could be an ice sheet. It could be a glass sheet. A glass dome it could be a mirror it could be whatever above us that we're not aware of science does a good job of hiding the truth sometimes sometimes they leave out one piece so that they can easily or more apologetically explain away things and I think that's what's really going on with uh, this whole topic of chemtrails and contrails I think they apologetically explain away uh, what you see in the sky because they don't want you to necessarily know what's really going on. And they want to leave it into the conspiracy realm because as long as it's in the conspiracy realm, uh, most of the, the public will not, you know, adhere or listen to it. They'll just think you're a tinfoil hat freak. You know, that's basically what they'll think. And of course, the powers that be like that, they want, they want it to remain in the conspiracy realm. They don't want any hardcore evidence to get out. And of course, me explaining it, you know, if you have someone who's actually like an insider, like I had in the beginning of this video, someone who's a scientist, you know, they, they put her in a mental institution to discredit her. And that way they can say, look, she just became wacky. We had to get rid of her. And that's how they can re leave it in the realm of conspiracy. And of course, um, if you have someone who is a scientist, who does come out and actually proves it, you know, showing various evidences, it doesn't mean that the, the general public are gonna believe it. See, the general public just believe what they're told. Whether or not, 
you know, there's any evidence behind what's being told. And that's what it really comes down to. So even if you have a scientist come out and prove something, if it's not the general consensus of, of the public and it's not something the elite want people to know, even if you prove it, even if you provide all the evidence, it could still remain in, in the realm of conspiracy because you're talking over people. You're maybe, let's say you're a scientist and you actually can thoroughly prove it. That doesn't mean the people watching you or listening to you can grasp what you're saying or even comprehend it or believe your evidence because they're not really evidence-minded. They're more so believe what is our, whatever's uh, mainstream-minded. You know what I mean? So I think this is a very interesting topic. I have never, I have only covered, I think this topic like once maybe before on this channel and I've got like, you know, I've made probably 800 videos on this channel, although I only have about 520 now because I've deleted so many videos over the years. But um, I, I've only covered this topic, I think, one time before. So I thought I'd do this video on it because I, I think it's a very interesting topic. I never, you know, I for a long time, I wasn't sure what to think about it. I knew something was going on, but I didn't really have enough um, evidence or a, a way to present it to where I, I felt confident that I could... Uh, convince people that it was real so I just kind of let it be I didn't want to really talk about it much but I think you know it, it's gotten to the point where I think I can provide enough evidence in this video to sh to prove that clearly this is not just standard contrails right I think what we've seen so far we've seen various evidences that clearly something is going on that they don't want us to know about now what is what is the uh what are they trying to do with this? I guess that would be another video for me to do. Uh, what What is exact, you know, I wanna get into that more before I really speak on that topic, but what are they trying to accomplish with these chemtrails? Obviously we have lots of different theories out there and people are, have spoken about this a lot. There's a lot of good videos out there already, but I wanna really investigate it and spend some time on it before I really just jump into it. You know what I mean? Do some really good research on it first before I do that. But at any rate, I just thought I would present what I've found so far and I hope you like it and thanks for watching.